Have you ever seen a piece of clothing on a friend and think, wow, I'd like to have that on me? Well, so did I. A couple of weeks ago, my friend Emily wore a really nice top. She sent me a picture and I was like, mm, where, where did you get that? Just, you know, asking for a friend. Unfortunately, the shop didn't have it anymore in my size. Uh, I couldn't find anything similar to it that I wanted. And so I decided, let's make it. So welcome to this video. Today we are making a very simple, very simple supposedly top. This is based on a top that my friend Emily wore and it was red and had a square neckline and puffy sleeves and it was beautiful and I really wanted it and it was out of stock in my size and uh, whatever, I can make it, right? Right? How hard can it really be? So her top was made out of a stretchy material, sort of, you know, your typical fast fashion shop like more flattering stretchy material to you know provide a better fit across different sizes i do not sew with stretch it confuses me and i don't like it so instead today we'll be using some linen that's just what i have lying around but this should work with every different kind of fabric just make sure it has some body to it otherwise it might just not yeah in like a medium weight fabric i would say or if you want to use a lightweight fabric then you can interface it or interline it Either or would work. So in this video, I just want to talk really briefly about what you can do when you see something that you really like, like in a shop or in someone else. And obviously like fast fashion moves so quickly, so fast that sometimes, you know, if you see something a friend bought, it probably won't be available anymore. And so if you do like the style, you can just be inspired by it and try to make your own. And so there are a couple of different ways you can do this. So the first, well, there are lots of different ways you can do this. The first three that came to mind to me was number one, you can drape your own pattern. And this is usually with the aid of a dress warp. Uh, uh, if you've not done draping before, draping is just when you put a piece of fabric on the dress form and you sort of smooth it and like shape it and pin it and cut it so that it fits the dress from in the way that you want it to. And then you can cut it up and draw style lines and make it what you want it to be. I used to be really into draping because I don't like flat drafting and I don't like patterning <laughs> and I don't like maths or anything. I used to be really into draping. However, this dress form, I'm just not happy with and I'm really scared that whatever I drape on it won't work for my body. It just doesn't work for me. I don't know what's wrong with it and I don't know what to do about it. So I'm just ignoring it for now. So instead of draping, if you don't have a dress room or you don't want to, the second option is you can find a similar pattern or if you can find the exact same pattern, great. But if you can't, you can find a similar pattern that you can alter to make it look like what you want. Option number three is if you have a basic body block, you can adapt that to look like what you want it to. I have a very outdated basic body block and I just, I don't like flat drafting. It doesn't make any sense to me. I much prefer to do like a basic mock-up and then fit that to my body and draw the style lines on my body and then use that to, as a pattern. And that is option two and that's what we're going to be doing today. So for my pattern, I decided to try the Mina pattern by Shorts Apparel. Let me just confirm that I've said that right. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, I followed the uh, pattern maker on Instagram for a long time and I really wanted to try one of their patterns and support their small business. So I bought a pattern, I printed it out, I taped it all up together and then I completely destroyed it. <laughs> I didn't realize that it was actually a different pattern in that in their line that would have worked much simpler and easier. I'll drop a link in the description box with both of these patterns so you can have a look if you're interested. But basically what I did was I cut the pattern out exactly as it was. I tried it on myself and then I just drew the style lines where I wanted them to be. And then I made a proper mock-up of that. And that mock-up you can see now. So the basic big changes that I made to this pattern were I tried to remove the dart at the front, I did a square neckline and I also moved the front closure to the back. 
I ended up doing a lot of weird attempted dart manipulation because I didn't want any darts in the front. I just wanted that plain front square neckline look. I'm not sure how successful that was. I think the fit ended up being a bit iffy because of that. Obviously, if you have darts or curved seams at the front, it'll provide you a much nicer fit. I didn't do that, so whatever. Uh, in the end, I don't think this pattern ended up being at all like the original. I basically just use it as a starting point to have something down on the paper because I didn't want to have to draft that myself. And I actually feel like I didn't do this pattern any justice because obviously I changed it so much. So I'd really like to use it in the future for like a proper dress or something to make it look like the pattern because it's a really nice pattern or it's a really nice looking pattern. I didn't know so I haven't tried it. But yeah. Uh, that was the journey up until now. You will have seen my mock-up and now we're going to do the real thing. So this should be a an easy-ish way of doing a, a top if you're a beginner sewer. I didn't really show the process of manipulating the pattern because it was very like trial and error. I have not professionally trained. Disclaimer! Disclaimer! I am not professionally trained in anything, well, sewing related. And so... I, I just try things. I pinch here and there and I draw a line here and there and I hope it works. So I didn't really show the process for this because I was really unsure about how it was going to work out. If you would like to see the process of making your own pattern, mock-up, drafting, fitting a bit better, I do have a video where I go a little bit more into that and I'll link it in the box in the description box. It's the making a medieval kirtle dress video. And in that you can see me fitting. I basically did the exact same thing I did on that, but I started with a pattern rather than a rectangle of fabric. So let's get into it. So here I am with an update with the wearable mock-up. The good news is that it is wearable. I think, you know, at least around the house. I really love the little colour that came out after dyeing it. But unfortunately it does have some fit issues, <laughs> which I can fix before I make the actual top. So uh, a thing to keep in mind is when you make wide necklines like this, is to make sure that the width at the top is correct, otherwise you'll risk the shoulders falling off. And that's happened to me so many times on so many different costumes. You can see that when I'm relaxed, the back is okay. But as soon as I, you can see that gaping there, and that's because it's too wide. It's just too wide at the back and at the front for me. So what I'm going to try to do in the pattern is I'm going to take it in at the center front here by I think about half an inch and then I'm going to add half an inch to the side here so that I don't lose any of the... I don't know if this makes any sense. I'm not pattern trained. I'm just trying. <laughs> The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen it just a little bit more because with trousers and jeans and things, I like it to be a little bit longer. Uh, otherwise, I think it's pretty cute. So I just thought I'd show you the final pattern in the end. As you can see, it has been completely uh, <laughs> massacrated from the first original pattern. Uh, but I have hopes of this. I think it's going to fit nicely. And now we're going to attempt to cut it out. So this is the fabric that we'll be using. This is one meter, yes I know, one meter only, of this really nice lightweight beige like natural linen. I bought this years ago off eBay. It's just one meter so it doesn't have a lot of options but I think we can just squeeze out this top from one meter of fabric. This is live footage of me realizing I haven't pre-washed this linen. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. After cutting out all the pieces, I marked and sewed the darts. First, I basted them with a ladder stitch, which when you pull up, joins the darts, and then I sewed it by machine.
okay. So now the darts are sewn, the next step is to actually, I'm gonna add a little bit of fusible interfacing to the back because it'll just help support the, the stress and the weight of the buttons because this is a center back closure, which is, I found quite imp impractical, but alas, that is what I wanted, so. Uh, so this is woven. You might've found like the paper one is more common, but I prefer, I personally prefer this one because I find the paper one kind of is integrates in a washing machine and this one holds up a lot better. So that's what I'm using. I've just cut uh, strips that are 1.5 inches wide, which is the button placket allowance at the center back anyway. Just ironing that on and then I'm gonna uh, press the button placket into place by folding under the raw edge and then folding again on both sides of the back. And then I'm gonna iron the darts and then I'll come back to you. things have happened and I forgot to update you. It's like I'm making my first video. So here is uh, the top as it stands. I've done some more alterations. <laughs> so I would highly recommend if you can try it on before it's completed, it can really help with the final fit. So that's what I did. And I ended up taking the shoulder by like two inches and a half or something ridiculous like that which I think will solve a lot of the issues that I had with the wearable mock-up, which although it looks really nice, it does have a lot of issues around gaping around the um, neckline. And the next thing I did, which I should have shown you, is I just uh, did a flat felt seam, and that's when you press your seam open, trim one side back, and then fold the other side over, and then stitch that down, and it creates like this little channel. It's a good, a good durable seam. So I did that to all of them around here. And now I'm just getting the facing done. So I'm not sure if you guys have a different way to do it, but I found um, square necklines quite hard to finish. And I think a, a facing is the easiest way that I can think of. So that's what we're gonna do. And it's what worked for the mock-up as well. So the, for the facing, you just need to trace off your neckline on the front and the back, and then add a desired width to it. Mine is about two inches. It's narrow at the shoulder because the shoulder is narrower than obviously the front and the back. And then all I did was I seamed it at the shoulder. And then I finished the bottom edge just by turning it under twice. And it's just a nice finished edge. And I didn't have a lot of fabric, so I did have to seam it at the front as well. But you know, piecing, piecing, piecing. And I'm just gonna pin this on and sew it on. I sewed the facing right sides together. After that, I also understitched it. This is when you sew the facing to the seam allowance and this helps prevent it from moving. So 
So I've done something very on brand, which is I forgot I'm meant to be talking in these videos. So I should have just shown you me cutting the cuff for the sleeves. So it's actually quite short sleeves and they're very similar to this. I actually used this pattern as a base for it as well. And what I've done basically is I've measured around my arm up here and then I added a little bit of slack. But as you might have seen in that video, I have like no fabric left. And so they actually might be a little tight. <laughs> But that's all the fabric I have, so that's gonna have to do. The next thing I did was I ironed them in half. You can see the crease here. This just makes the uh, process of flipping them over and sewing them down a lot easier. And now I'm just going to connect them at the end with a really narrow seam because obviously they're already a bit tight. And then after that, I'm just gonna get the uh, bottom part of the sleeve into it, pull up all the coloring threads, pin it into place and sew back machine. <laughs> The sleeves are actually one of the most time consuming things because obviously gathering takes a little bit of time and you want them to look nice and you want to sew them right and the whole thing and then I'm gonna have to set the top part of the sleeve so hopefully next time I'll have some sleeves done for you guys. The gathering threads that I'm pulling up here are just two rows of the longest setting of stitching on your machine that you can then pull on the bobbin thread to gather up the fabric. Hi guys, um, I look a mess today, so I'm gonna stay mostly on off camera. <laughs> we all have those days, but I just wanted to show you that the sleeves are set in now, and I think they look very, very cute. But I just wanted to give you a, a quick tip in case um, you don't already do this. <laughs> I feel like most of you probably do this, it's probably really obvious, but I just wanted to share something, and I'm not sure this is the proper way to do it, but it's something that I've changed about my sewing recently and that I feel has really helped. So I don't enjoy setting in sleeves because often it goes wrong. But something that I've changed recently, you might have noticed in my videos, is that I used to sew sleeves <clears throat> from the bodice side like this. So I would remove this piece of my machine and I would slide the armhole or arm, arm side in here and I would sew the sleeve like this. And this may seem like the most easy and useful thing to do it from the bodice side, but I've actually found that sewing from the sleeve side, from the inside, like this, just gives me a lot more control. I can still, with my fingers, feel and smooth out the bodice side, but it also means that I can position the gathers a lot better as I sew. Um, obviously this doesn't really matter if you're based, I guess, but if you don't baste, I just find it a lot easier to do it from the sleeve side. And that's actually consistently given me less problems with having to redo certain bits of setting in sleeves. So yeah, just thought I'd share that. So at the point now, we're nearly at the finish with this top. I'm really excited to try on the final thing. So the last things I need to do is to finish the armhole Theme. I think I'm either going to use some bias tape or I've got some linen tape that I can use. I'm just going to do that by hand, I find that a lot easier. <laughs> and then I need to do a bunch of buttonholes and find some buttons to go in here. And I may 
try to secure the facing down. I may do this with a herringbone stitch or maybe just a discreet top stitch. I'm not gonna top stitch it by machine, but I might try it with a catch stitch or a herringbone stitch just along this edge, just to keep it from flapping up. The under stitching really helped, but because it's quite a wide strip, it'll just be easier for it to be caught on something. But also I don't really want a line of stitchings here. So I'm, I'm not sure. I might leave that to the last minute and try it on finished and then decide. I just wanted to show you, I mentioned earlier in the video that I only had one meter of fabric and uh, this is all that's left. Don't forget to hem the bottom of the shirt. I just turned it under twice by half an inch and then sewed it down by machine. 